probably the most serviceable but forgettable action trilogy I've ever seen. I barely remember the first two movies. I thought they were decent, but like I said, extremely forgettable that are effectively made with good direction and solid performances, especially from Denzel Washington, who was always reliable. And this one continues that trend. It's really effective with a, an atmosphere that's foreboding, dark, brutal, and relentless in its tone and its depiction of violence in the effects that it has on the communities and people around us. There's an attempt to have contemplative thought on those themes that I just mentioned, but at the same time, they're not as big of a focus as they should be, while it tries to also focus in on what the TV show is about and Denzel helping people in different scenarios, almost like an episodic thing. And this, I definitely get that feeling like it's an extended higher budget episode of the show that maybe could have worked as like a series finale. Now, I'm not super familiar with the show, but I know enough about it to know that feeling and have seen enough episodic television to recognize it as well. And Denzel just absolutely excels. He plays McCall with such nuance and, and understated trauma and anxiety and OCD, but also kindness and gentleness and a ferocity that is terrifying. The action itself is strikingly violent and incredibly brutal. So anytime a big action scene would come, it was actually pretty shocking to watch and not gratifying in the sense of like, oh man, that was awesome. There are some cool moments like that, but mostly just shocking. So I wonder if they leaned a little too hard into the nihilistic nature of violence. However, I see why they didn't want to reinforce this thematically. I just don't think it was as necessary as they could have. They could have doubted the fun factor of the action movie a little bit. It's very serious and I respect it for that, for taking its source material and taking the story as seriously as they do, showcasing the world in which it is portrayed as very real and very consequence heavy. I couldn't tell you much about much of the support cast other than Dakota Fanning is in this. I liked her, she was fine. But really the highlight there is that it's a reunion between Denzel Washington and Dakota Fanning from Man on Fire. And that was pretty cool. They have a good chemistry together. However, The Equalizer 3 suffers from severe pacing issues. And it's not just that the movie is slow. It takes forever for anything to happen, period. And I feel like that's a problem in an action movie. It can't quite decide if it wants to be a drama or an action film. You have this really great opening tracking shot that's a one-er, reddit at least to be like a one-er. All this carnage that we don't get to see. That kind of flashback to a later in a really cool way. And then we go probably more than an hour without a lick of action. Now, that's not saying the story itself is bad in between those moments, but there's a certain expectation in how these films are marketed and with how the other two films work. Now it's been a while, I need to rewatch them, of what this film should be like and that there should be more action present than there was. And then it builds to this huge moment this like rousing standoff that is handled really well and really intelligently with the use of social media and smartphones nowadays and how to combat these types of people, this criminal organization. You get into it and there's some stealthy moments and all and then it's just kind of over. Yeah, there's some symmetry in the story and some poetic justice to be had for sure. And then the movie kind of just ends. It leaves you with a smile, but there's also an extreme sense of anticlimax. It's an anticlimactic third act after a ton of buildup with very little action. And I was left feeling just like, that's it. That's all we got. A well-directed, brutal, but boring action film. But all that being said, the movie's mostly just fine. It's fine. You'll get fine performances, fine direction, a fine look, fine camera work, fine staging, fine choreography, fine editing, but nothing stands out. And it makes the cardinal sin of being more boring than it should be. However, it balances that out with surprising amount of levity and still being interesting enough and having enough of in that cool character that Denzel portrays as the Equalizer to make it a step above your bad action movies. I give the Equalizer three, three out of five stars. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you can subscribe to this video. Wait for more content coming soon and stay tuned and remember, always look for the good.